Welcome back to the Action Takers Podcast. Now today, on today's episode, we're gonna be teaching you how to build a brand with legacy in mind. And to do that, I have Precious Azare, founder of the Precious Azare Group, the faith and productivity queen. We get into everything from building a legacy, building a beautiful brand, also relationships and dating as an entrepreneur. We talk about everything. So you're really gonna love this episode. Check it out and I'll see you inside. All right, so welcome to Action Takers, where we interview people who are creating a future where they are in control. And we do this so you can learn the mindsets from them and apply it to your own life. And today, I have with me a very special guest. She's the faith and productivity queen, the founder of the Precious Azuri Group, the PAG Academy. She's created the Faith in Finesse Mastermind Series, the three-day self-confidence challenge, and she also works with Measure which uses data and education to empower communities and self-advocate. And I really love that word, self-advocate. Precious Azuri, did I say it right? I hope I didn't mess your name up, please. Azure, but it's all good. Oh, Azure, I'm so sorry. I should have asked you that before we got on here. Azure, I'm so (laughs) sorry. I don't want to be that person. I said wrong the entire show. You'd be like, "Uh, I wish you would have got my name right. But yeah. Well, I was going to get I was like, let him let let me let him finish this beautiful introduction, and then well, I'll, you know, uh, it's one of those situations when you when you got it like that. I don't. I, I'm just reading the stuff. You get upset. It's just <laughs> what you actually did. So I feel like um, it makes it easy. My job easy. So um, yeah. Why you here? Um, I just want. I like to start everybody off and just tell them your story. Tell them how you got started, and tell them who you are, and then we'll get into it from there. Okay, awesome. Well, I'm Precious Azure, as he said. I'm the founder of the Precious Azure Group, um, which is solely focused on building the human, social, and financial capital of entrepreneurs to better position them for growth and stability. That's our big overarching vision. Um, And so within that, I've created the Brand is Wealth movement, Mm. and as well as I'm going to be launching PAG Academy, which we'll also get into that a little bit later. Um, So I do identify myself as an entrepreneur. I'm a creative entrepreneur. Um, I started out in the fashion industry, went to school for fashion and business, uh, studied abroad in Paris, mm. really wanted to um, really be the businesswoman behind the fashion industry. Yeah. And yeah. Um, definitely saturated market. This was back in 2012, 2013. Yeah. And I was like, well, can't do that in Texas. I would probably have to go to Dallas. So yeah. um, I ended up getting an internship uh, to work with Zach Posen, mm. who um, is a very prominent designer and Moved to New York on a whim, yeah. literally saved up a month's worth of, worth of expenses and just took that leap of faith. Mm. Um, went out there Love and it. I quickly decided I did not want to be a starving artist. <laughs> so um, I was reading the book Instinct by T.D. Jakes at the yeah. time. And so um, after just taking a, a, a walk along, I think I went to Coney Island and I was like, you know, I think I'm going to go back home and like re-figure this out. And so... Uh, came back home, was going to open me up a boutique. Mm. I was like, okay, I can, I'm a businesswoman. Not, I, should, I should do that. Yeah. And started getting accounts with Nicole Miller, um, Diane von Furstenberg, a lot of dope brands that I absolutely love. Mm-hmm. Um, I found a business partner to lock arms with. Um, her and I love fashion and understood business and really big on just creating wealth for our families. And we traveled, ran up credit cards, yeah. going to LA, <laughs> yeah. work, just to build relationships and get things done. Um, and then the investor we had backed out at the last minute. Mm. So then that was another like reset. Okay, like what's up? So you know you go back to bartending and just figuring out what's next. This is late 2014, yeah. and I was like, I really got a network. I know that you know people are relationships are the real currency, mm-hmm. and so I just started networking more. Started like trading shifts so I could go to different events, and then my manager was like. So clearly you don't want to be here because um, you're giving your shifts away. Like what's going on? And so it was like a mutual thing. And I quit. And then I've been a full-time entrepreneur since, yeah, the end of December. Yeah, it's December 2014. Um, and shortly after that, I, I started working as a project manager with this uh, bomb women that were doing real estate investing. Mm-hmm. And through that, I, started, I think uh, Instagram was picking up at that time. And I was doing my personal branding of just inspiration and style and really saw people resonated more with my content of you know just empowering them and a lot of people don't know when I was giving those messages I was more so empowering myself yeah and I was just like I need to give you know feed my spirit and I just decided to 
to be transparent and vulnerable with that process on social media. And um, from there, just to kind of, because there's so many layers to the yeah. story, but Go ahead. I really started building my personal brand. Um, and I didn't even know I was building my personal brand. I'll say that. I was more so like, I, I've always been adamant about how I show up. Yeah. Um, you know, my, my grandparents, they know they're like more so my grandmother. She never wanted me to go out the house looking crazy. Mm -hmm. So image style, all those things kind of all play together. And with me wanting to convert that online, once social media started taking off, I learned how to do graphic design, web design, all those different things. And then I started catching the eyes of other seasoned entrepreneurs that were like, you're the social media girl. Like, can you do what you do for yourself for me? Yeah. And so yeah. once I started working with more established business owners, I then also became a bridge to my creative industry where I'm really from my creative circle mm -hmm. where, you know, they're like precious, you know, I want to do this event. Yeah. So, um, when I started, uh, working with a lot of seasoned entrepreneurs and small business owners, they just identified me as that social media girl. And, um, with building those relationships and still having my creative circle, you know, people were reaching out of like, oh, Precious, I want to do an event or I want to launch my website or this product and different things like that. And so I've always considered myself the bridge to business and creative. Mm -hmm. And so um, with me carrying the title as a brand strategist and a high performance coach um, now, I didn't even know those titles existed. Yeah. And so, um, you know, and, and that, that, that time, that five or six years where I was really just trying to figure out my identity, it's crazy that now I'm working with entrepreneurs and helping them develop their brand with legacy in mind. And so the journey is definitely um, one that I'm appreciative for. So, yeah, um, definitely. I mean, that's somewhat of an overview. Um, no, it was, like it was amazing. Now, but, you know, we can get in family and yeah. we can go as deep as you want to go. You just yeah, let me yeah. know. Yeah, definitely. Um, I love it. I love it. Like I said, I think um, everything you talked about, you said a lot of good stuff there. So there's a lot to unpack there. There's a lot of good stuff and a lot I definitely want to get your perspective on while I have you on the show. Um, so I guess I want to start here. Um, it seems to me from what, what I've learned about you that you've been somebody who's always been into entrepreneurship. I know that um, when you were young that, um, you know, you said you were big into your faith and in the church, but also you managed the candy business. So is that, <laughs> yes, is, I did. yeah, so that like, is that where, did it start for you very young? Did that mindset as an entrepreneur start for you very young or was it something you developed later in life? Yeah, I can say um, it started at a young age. Uh, my, both of my parents are entrepreneurs mm -hmm. um, and I definitely can say me having my own candy business as a seventh grader yeah. was mm -hmm. definitely like a light bulb. Mm -hmm. um, but even through going through grade school and things like that, I never really aspired to own a business yeah. technically. Yeah. Um, my parents did and I knew I would, I knew the importance of having different streams of income. Um, but I was definitely really focused on like getting a career and yeah. living this corporate lifestyle because yeah. yeah. I just love structure. Yeah. And so I'm like, Oh, this is great. I can mm -hmm. just like, well, you know, I actually, uh, I know there's a lot of negative connotation with clocking in nine to five, but mm -hmm. for me, I'm like time management structure. You give me a job. Okay. You know, that's something easy I can follow. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've always been creative and I knew that I would always have other things where I would be able to express my creativity and passion. Yeah. But I always say entrepreneurship chose, chose me yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. That life chose you. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, I will say this, though. You talked about something there. You said, um, you know, having the parents that are entrepreneurs. And I've always told people that I think that parents can play such a large role in our success. So do you think your parents were encouraging? Was that something that was that made it good, easy for you to do a lot of things that you did? Or was it just something that you had to kind of bring from within? Yeah, um, I can say it was something I had to bring from within. My mother was in the real estate industry, and mm -hmm. I would just be you know, with her going to the bank, making deposits, having to count money or having to take notes when she was on a call and, and being part of those conversations, just even being in the car with, with, while they're doing conference calls, I'm like listening, asking questions. And so it was very indirect with my father, you know, he was kind of like a weekend dad, yeah. you know, he was in and out, you know, I love him to death though, yeah. but, um, he had his own business and he was just really big on just having control of his time. So, um, indirectly, they did both influence my mindset when it came to money and just having, you know, financial freedom. But um, when I when I was 16, my mother got incarcerated, and then mm -hmm. shortly after that, uh, my dad he kind of distanced himself from me. And so, 
from there, I was just kind of forced to figure it out and, and survive for myself. And yeah. so yeah. I really say I've been on this journey since I was 16, which was back in 2008, just in regards of uh, self-fulfillment yeah. and, yeah. you know, looking, discovering what my purpose is and just being intentional with my relationships, time. And I didn't, I didn't have time to wait, yeah. you know, so I'm always that person where I do take the time to reflect, but I, I jump off, I jump off the, the, the cliff and then I build the plane while I'm in the air. Yeah. And, and that right there is an amazing mindset. What do you think? What do you think stops people from being like that though? What do you think is the thing that stops a person from saying, here's the thing, here's the thing I want to do. I'm just going to take the leap of faith. I'm going to take the risk. What do you, what do you believe that is? Is that fear? Is that something in the yeah. brain? Yeah. Um, I think, um, we don't know it. People have to really introduce us to fear, right? We're not born fearful. No. Someone has Little to. Little baby gonna put his hand right on that stove. Yeah. <laughs> Someone has to implant that thought or that seed of fear. So I just think that, you know, from a generational perspective, uh, I can speak from a black woman. You figuring out how to survive. Yeah. So it's like, look, this is what I know. This is what I'm gonna teach you. So I always say, like, our parents only they did their best with what they had. And so a lot of it is more embedded from a, a family perspective, a generational perspective. And then, you know, being exposed to different things. I was a naturally curious kid and I was the one that just wanted to explore and, and, and have different things. And I didn't really activate my faith until, you know, I, I felt that's all I had. Yeah. I'm like, OK, at this point, both of my soul providers are now gone. So it's just, OK, God, it's just me and you. I was introduced to you as a kid. I know you like created me. Yeah. Um, I know what faith is. I do know all the books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I guess let's just figure this out. You know, you're supposed to be here. So it was kind of, that's kind of when I started building an intentional relationship with God and really using my faith. Um, but I can say until you actually have like, you know, a lion chasing you. Yeah. Where you have to you're not going to be really motivated. And I think motivation and ambition kind of both play a role when yeah. people say, you know, I'm not motivated to this. It's really more so you don't have the ambition or you really don't know your why yeah. of why you're doing it. Yeah. You a deeper de a yeah. desire and you really know your why, it's no question about it. You're going to figure it out. Yeah. And so I know with guys, I like to use the analogy of like sports, mm -hmm. you know, you have a diehard fan that you're a diehard team that you love and you're going to buy the tickets. You're going to have a whole experience because you're like, hey, yeah. this is what I'm passionate about. So the stuff yeah. you're passionate about, you're not really going to put put that foot forward. And, and your surroundings, too. It's a lot of things that go with it, but you have to want it. And so yeah. if you really want it, you're not going to attract what you need to actually do it. I definitely agree with that. I was telling somebody the other day, I said that what creates the most speed, I think, when it comes to success is how many times you can get out that comfort zone very quickly. I think that when you put yourself in situations where it's like, Okay, here's my comfort zone. I'm breaking my comfort zone again. I'm breaking my comfort zone again because it's just crazy what you can figure out once you get to the point of I'm just gonna put myself in the deep end and I'm gonna swim. It's just it's just shocking all the time. And like I said, I, I definitely see that you take that mindset. Now, I want to say this: what's remarkable about you when I observed everything is that you have a lot of attention to detail. Like me, I like to go look at somebody's stuff and see, like, um, from a branding standpoint. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, I um. I've read so many books, but one big thing that I focused on early was design. I'm big on like design, how things look, the aesthetic, right? And as a brand strategist, what is what is something that you take that you say um, is important when you think about building a brand, when you think about coming from nothing? Because a lot of people think it's some money. What are some of the tips you give to somebody who's like, you know, I'm trying to build a brand for myself, even from starting from nothing? Yeah. Well, I always say it's important to... Um the, a brand is like the soul mm -hmm. of whatever you're branding, whether that's a product, service, company, mission, mm -hmm. organization, it's the soul of that. Yeah. And like um, that. the reason why I now position myself to more focus on personal development, I still consider myself a brand strategist, but from working with so many entrepreneurs, a lot of what's missing is their messaging. It's not clear their purpose, their intention, their value proposition, their audience, they don't really know those things. And so from a brand perspective, you're putting a lot of work on my table to do that. And I feel like 
everyone needs to do the personal work. If you really want to build a brand with legacy in mind, yeah. I never, I never work with people that are just wanting to do something on the fly. That's a waste of my time and theirs. Yeah. A waste, yeah. you know, creative, creative talent, just mentally. It's like, yeah. what's the end here? What's the impact we're trying to create? Yeah. And if you haven't thought about the questions of impact and different things like that, you're not my ideal client. Yeah. And so, um, for people that are looking to build a brand, it's, it's a series of questions that you just want to go through in regards to figuring out, like, who am I serving? Who am I targeting? Because sometimes we build things based on what other people are doing or what we feel like will make us look cool. Yeah, definitely. But surface, you know, because a lot of people, when they see, when they think about brand, they're like, I want to look good. Yeah, definitely. And for me, it's no point in looking good if the inside is all... No substance. ...compobulated yeah. and... Because at the, end, the 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 mistake people make is they, okay, great. You may have a budget or you figure out, okay, this is my logo, this is my colors, it's this. After that, if you have a brand, you have to have a brand management plan because being consistent is a part of being a brand. So if we take all this time and build this brand and you can't maintain it, mm-hmm. then let's pause. Yeah. Everybody, launch. Yeah. you want to launch. I can launch this. Yeah. Let's take a break real quick to make sure there we are very intentional with everything that we're doing. And so um, that's just uh, that's just the tip of the iceberg on just my view on the first steps to take when you're when you're building. a brand. Yeah, I know. I definitely know you. You've got strategies for days. I will say this, though. <laughs> something you, you just said, though, that um, it's something I want to key in. You said with legacy in mind. I think a lot of people talk about legacy. Um, what does legacy mean for you? Because. I think a lot of people, when they're building businesses, or even if they're trying to be an entrepreneur, they're a lot of times just thinking about the hustle for right now. Like, I want to make some money. I want to get a Lambo. I want to get a mansion. But um, I think legacy speaks to something deeper than just having nice things. Of course, we want nice things. But what is legacy for you? I I honestly use brand and legacy um, as like a synonym mm-hmm. because essentially it can live on past me and it can benefit and impact generations past my existence. And so, uh, you know, legacy means generational wealth. Um, legacy means, means like your brand essentially is what's left your reputation, your relationships, the things that you acquire, the things you can't, you know, take with you to heaven. And, and all those things are a part of what you should be developing and thinking about. And so I'm the second oldest of 10. So I had a epiphany moment earlier this year, I was like, I'm thinking too small. It's like 10 of us. So I have to start buying things in tens. I'm not buying a house. I need to buy a whole block. Like (laughs) that's like bare minimum. So what am I doing? And, and for me, I'm all about condensing time. So if I know there's a steps I have to take or amount of work I need to put in, there's no way around it. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. They say that takes a year. Let me see if I can do it in six months. Yeah. Like that, that's like my mentality. And so, uh, circling back to just legacy in general, you have to have that legacy mindset, but you can't fully adopt that legacy mindset without adopting a growth mindset first. Yes, yes. Um, so I really focus in on like coaching my my social media community as well as my clients and members on adopting that growth mindset. Yeah, ten. You said of ten. Yes. Yeah, so my mom has four kids. My dad has five kids. I have a stepbrother, stepsister. Yeah. So yeah, I have nine siblings. Wow. That must have been fun. Yeah. At one point, I think seven of us lived in the house together. Six of us. Six of us lived in the house together. Yeah. But, um, yeah, space. Yeah. That, that thing about space. Um, I'm now, you know, <laughs> space. But before then, it just kind of was together. Yeah, definitely. Like, just together. <laughs> I mean, I guess piggybacking on that then, let's. I guess we could talk about then, um, as an entrepreneur, I ask people, entrepreneurs this all the time because I'm curious. How is um how do you manage relationships as an entrepreneur? I mean, there's multiple ones. You know, we got family, I guess, personal, you know, like dating relationships. How do you manage that with being an entrepreneur and building everything you're trying to build right now? Right. That's an awesome question. Um, so I guess I can speak on the lens of time. Whenever I'm doing my planning, I do make note. Um, and so I'm a little OD with time with my with my time management. Mm-hmm. Um, from like my calendar management and different colors Mm. and I'm a visual person. So I'm like, 
I have a calendar for family. I have a calendar for measure. I have a calendar for PAG. I got a personal calendar. Yeah. So I visually seem to be like, wow, okay, my calendar is majority green today. I'm doing a lot of work. Yeah. Okay, well, then I'm going to do some personal stuff on this day. Mm. Um, but that's just in regards to time management. So I will um, I have to put it, I'm honestly, to be transparent, I have to put it on my calendar. Yeah. Because if I don't, I'm so into my work where I won't be able to, yeah. you know. Yeah. And now I'm I'm single right now, so I really don't have anyone holding me accountable yeah. to that. Um, so it's important for me to write everything down. Yeah. So, um, you know, I have uh, Monday calls with my grandparents. Um, I schedule um, every third Saturday I have breakfast with my grandmother. Yeah. She needs you have to have that extra. Yeah. So. I want you to pick her up, do the whole thing. So I have to block out four hours yeah. for that engagement. Yeah. Um, in regards to my friends, I'm telling you, group chats has helped so much. Because, mm. you know, everybody's in there commenting. So it's like, okay, cool. Let me hop in here, throw a little p- few words. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's from a personal perspective. So from a business perspective, um, birthdays are really important to me. So I'll be sure to, um, and Facebook has held me accountable to that. Yeah. I thank them for those reminders. Um, so I definitely do the birthdays. Um, I always do. I like to do personal check-ins with the people I work with just cause I don't want it to always be about work. Mm-hmm. And so if I know that I've had like a lot of business conversations with this person or we've done a lot of email correspondence, you know, I'll, you know, maybe engage with them a little bit more on social media just to let them know that I'm interested in them, not just yeah. the contract yeah. the project or X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And so I have to be very mindful um, that, you know, we're working with people and humans and, yeah. you know, we all go through human things. Yeah. And so I try to recognize the humanity in all people and just do my do my best. I don't put too much pressure on myself because mm-hmm. that would be a lot because managing relationships is a lot. But like I said, relationships are more important to me than actual physical dollars. Yeah. And so um, it's important that I always... Uh, enter and leave relationships with grace, yeah. and that, that's a whole other topic within yeah, itself. I can see, I can see how you lit up when you said that. Is that, <laughs> yeah, is that how you like, is, wow. is that how you do your dates too? Are you like, hey, look, seven o'clock here? We're gonna be here eating for seven seven thirty minutes. Then after thirty minutes, we're gonna have a brisk walk and then a picnic. Look, and then... <laughs> let me tell you this: I kid you not. I'm gonna try to find it because I said I was gonna put it a part of a, a, a video I do or something. Yeah. But I was cleaning up or going through one of my old boxes and I came across yeah. a little piece of paper and it was from when I was, this was back in 2003, 2004. Mm-hmm. So I was like 13 at the time, but I wrote down my schedule. Yeah. Like I put wake up at six, first teeth at 6.02, mm-hmm. um, get dressed at six. So I've been doing this since I was a teenager. Yeah. Didn't even know like that. I don't know where that insane habit came from. Mm-hmm. But I've always been conscious of time. I'm, I've always known, like, time just, it flies by so much. And it's like, I need to know what I'm doing. Yeah. And so I don't know if it was because I love school so much. Because I def- I was the girl that went to summer school when she didn't have to. Because yeah. I just yeah. love learning. Or I'd be at home and they want to play dog. Like, let's play school. I got this new, um, you know, I love math. I love solving problems. And so I was I was that one. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, yeah, I guess I've always been that way. But I've had to... I, you're close to me if I allow you to check me, and so my friends would be like, "Precious, yeah, we don't have to map it out to yeah. tea. We just yeah. we just want to be." I'm like, "You're so yeah. right. Let me just be with y'all." Yeah. And so, um, so it's good I have that balance because I'm always like this. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like too now that I've been reflecting more is that it's just kind of for a season, really. Yeah. yeah. So I told myself I was gonna go hard till I hit thirty, and right now. I'm like 11 months away from that, so yeah, I gotta go even harder. Yeah, I guess I guess you know for anybody, even like you talk about the dating space, that must be very intimidating because you're somebody who you're somebody, and, and I know everybody's different, but you're somebody who knows what you want. And I feel like a lot of times when when women know what they want, um, it's very intimidating for people. Do you find that to be one of the factors you think as far as like um, just the dating side of it? Because that's something yeah. I like to talk about a lot in entrepreneurship is like. Because that can be a thing. Like, day nine yeah, is tough. Oh, I appreciate you for saying that. And I can say that no man has explicitly said, um, yeah, you were a bit intimidating to begin with. You know, no one has, you know, fixed their lips to say that. But what I think is, you know, I think the elephant in the room is intimidation. Mm-hmm. But I also feel like a man that 
really wants me won't have to ask for permission. Yeah. He'll like show up yeah. and play that role. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Um, but I can say that I've been conscious with me knowing that I know I may look intimidating or people may be intimidated. Um, I feel like I've taken on the role of not being the stereotype or the stereotypical pretty girl that's on her stuff. Like she probably this or probably that. So sometimes I'm, I'm a bit over nice or like overly gracious. And they're like, wow, she's actually kind of cool. So I'm like, I have to represent for all of us women. Nah, out here that you got to like, stay hard out here. What do you mean? You know, like that are focused and grinding. They're like we're not all just like yeah. on that all the time. Like we have soft areas too. But um, so, yeah, I mean, I could definitely say it's been a challenge. I honestly didn't start intentionally dating until last year. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've been single for about five years. So dating as an adult woman, because most of my dating relationships was when I was 25 and younger. Um, this is new. So I'm figuring it out just as much as y'all are. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Can you answer this? I don't know why guys believe that like DM proposals are a thing. Um, I've gotten a few of messages like that or the, the, Hey, beautifuls, like those things don't really work. So I don't know if you can give me insight uh, on uh, those comments, yeah. you know, do you know yeah, let me speak for all men. No, no, I'm playing, but please, uh, please, <laughs> I, 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 I really think I'm supposed to well, respond. No, no. I think, um, I think though, um, I think what it comes down to is something I've big, big on recently telling people whatever, right. Everybody needs a different approach as far as what they see. Right. I feel like you're somebody who might be, you want probably something more of um, an old school type of courtship, probably, right? Like something that's a lot more. Um, so, I, I think right now, it, it, the approach that I would respect and genuinely respond to, I'm really big on friendship. Yeah, so that's what I'm, I'm saying. saying that I want to automatically friends on you. It's more so of like, there's a personality thing that has to make For sense. For sure. So, you having a genuine interest in what I do or what I'm doing. A, a real in-person connection is always best. Mm -hmm. And I was just talking to my sister the other day and I was like, I honestly feel like we really need to push more of the community arranged marriages in a sense. Cause I know parents used to arrange them, but I'm like, if we really was a little bit intentional about, I know we network for business, but networking for marriage and saying like, Hey, you really dope. I need to connect you with my friend or X, Y, and Z. I think that could that's, be a thing. I really want to build that culture. That's that structure but, coming back. <laughs> uh, right, right. I know, right? I'm like always, I'm, I always have this like strategy mindset. You gonna but tell your I'm daughter. I'm so focused. So you gonna tell your daughter. So I'm. <laughs> I was like, you gonna tell your daughter, oh uh, yeah, you know, your your husband, he's two blocks over. We've been grooming him uh, for you. No, 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 not at all. I'd rather her friends do it. Because <laughs> okay. her friends would know her a little bit better yeah. than me, but not saying me as a parent, but, you know, just for those of us that are legacy yeah. driven, that are wanting to have families, that are one of those different things, as we're networking and, and making moves together, just having that in the back of our mind of like, yeah. wow, I think these two may, you know, mm -hmm. because I'm so focused. So someone literally has to like introduce you into my space for me to see you. Yeah. So some type, I guess, what, a letter recommendation or something? Yeah, or that would be like, funny. I, I, I don't know how that would work. My but my home girl, my home do. girl says she thinks what you're doing is great, and I'd like to recommend her for a relationship with you. That'd be cool. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you probably be like, oh my god, this is so amazing. I've been recommended yeah. for a relationship. I guess you know. I think um, when you think about courtship and stuff like that, it's just more difficult for some people on social media because I think some people do want more personal connection. So I don't think that people are. I think. Where, where it comes from is that's what's usually working, right? That's how they're usually connecting with people. So I don't think it's like a personal thing. It's like if, if you DM some girls and say, hey, beautiful, and then you got girls who respond. Because I'll be honest, I think a lot of people not getting responses from DMs. Every girl I've known, a lot of them DMs is getting ignored anyway. So that may just have to be with the approach, right? So Yeah, I can say there was one successful slide mm -hmm. that I did get. Um, but that was only because we were in the same business fraternity. Yeah. And so I was like, there's a little foundation there. Yeah, that's and, the connection uh, again. Well, the connection. And so I was like, oh, okay. Like, you know, you start with the compliments and then you get into real conversation. And it's like, okay, you got my number. Okay. But, yeah, I just pray for the ones that just send, the, send them, like, all the time. I'm like, yeah. you I'm want, so sorry. You want to know one of the funniest um, DMs I've ever seen? So this guy, he um he just dropped a soccer ball in um the girl's DM, right? 
And, you know, she just put like question marks. What does that mean? He said, oh, my bad. My ball rolled in here. But what's up, though? See, the thing is, corny stuff like that will be cute if I actually like was attracted to you. Or like that's what I you, see. There you go. You just hit it. You just hit the nail on the head right there, though. I'm kind of corny and goofy too. But if I don't know you and you're a stranger and you're telling me that, I'm like, but I if think. I, oh, go ahead. No, I'm saying I think that's a lot of things that we don't talk about a lot with a lot of the approaches too. I think somebody you're attracted to, there's just a lot more leeway. Like, you really yeah. attracted somebody, and they's like, hey, beautiful. You probably be like, oh, hey, what's going on? But mm -hmm. if you don't like, I tell girls all the time, they be like, you know, I can't find nobody out here. I say, look under your pictures. Look in them DMs. You're like, I, you don't want them, though. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'll fly you across the world. I'll do everything. I'll come cook. I'll clean your house every day. I'll organize your schedule. I know that probably appealed to you. But you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> But no, I can say that um, last year, so I said last year was my year of, like, intentionally dating. Yeah. And so... I did a major end of the year reflection mm -hmm. with myself and God. And I was like, okay, God, I appreciate all these experiences, but let me just rewrite the yeah. vision. And so I rewrote the vision, said my prayer, and I listened to it, um, you know, here and there. But um, I know the woman that I'm working to be. And so that's really what I embody within the man that I want. And so I'm just kind of put it in his hands, but also engaging. I know a lot of us women are like, anybody out here, this, this, and that. And it's like, but are you really like present and fully engaged in today? Yeah, definitely. Because if you're not, then you're going to attract the men that aren't. And um, Relationship Goals is a book I'm reading as well. Wow. So you guys can tap into that with my Todd. Okay, definitely. I'm putting it on my book list. But I think you just went back to it, even with dating, whatever it is, and being intentional right? Like intentional what we want. So I guess with that, just shifting mm -hmm. gears a little bit, let's talk about, let's talk about the uh, PAG Academy. Let's talk about some of yes. the stuff you're doing. Um, so what's the PAG Academy and, and what's its focus? So PAG Academy is solely here to create a space where happiness and discipline can coexist mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and really helping people develop the habits that they need to be more productive mm -hmm to be more sustainable. So um, that's gonna happen through live trainings. I have a private Facebook group that I uh, do live trainings in every Monday. Um, PAG Academy right now, we have a YouTube channel and there's different content on there that can feed your spirit. Um, I, any sermons that really resonate with me, I put a playlist there so people can rewatch those. Um, any interviews that I've seen, just different things to feed our mind, um, our hearts, um, all of that. And so um, in the next two weeks, I'm going to be launching the actual PAG Academy platform mm -hmm. where people can be able to um, get more in-depth, strategic, live training with me on how to implement some of the things that I do in regards of planning, in regards of strategy, in regards of organizational structure, all the things that people are lacking on the how-to Sometimes we can know the how-to, but we don't know how to implement those mm -hmm. things. And so with me doing the live trainings of how to implement them, you can also then, you know, ask your specific questions of what may pertain to you specifically. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll have live trainings, um, courses, like many courses. I'm really big on communication. Um, that's something that's on my vision board or my, my vision statement yeah. is becoming a master communicator. So I really want to help people navigate those difficult conversations more, um, conversations with ourselves, our self-talk, conversations with, you know, um, business partners or conversations with how to how to navigate situations when things didn't go as yeah. planned. And so the goal is to just really implant God's love and grace into everybody to where when those bad days come and those bad situations come, we're really more focused on leaving it with love and grace and going into the next situation with that. So yeah, it's really more so a lot of training and development is what PAG Academy yeah. is. And something, I'm a lifelong learner, and so I'm always looking for ways to be better. So for any multi-passionate entrepreneurs that like have several different things happening and really wanting to like make them cohesive and make everything come together. And the other good part is that with all the Academy members, they'll have access uh, to my brand coaching. Yeah. Right now you have you have to submit application. Like I said, you know, a lot of people forget to do all the work. And so there's an application process for me to do any type of strategy 
Um, but for my academy members that I know that have the right habits to maintain whatever they're working on or whatever they're working towards, I'm like, okay, you're developed personally enough to really take on your brand seriously. So let's have a talk, you know? So, so yeah, it's a, it's a lot of cool things and big picture. I'm working on developing, I have a partnership with Canva that's in the Mm. works, um, wanting to get some, some discounts and perks. And so I'm going to be talking to different brands so that anyone that's a part of the PAG Academy can be able to take, um, take use and take advantage of those discounts. Huge moves, huge moves. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really like a lot that you said there. Um, I think a big thing you were talking about too, you said you're a lifelong learner, right? So you are, are, do you read a lot? Oh my God. I have been, have became a complete bookworm. Mm -hmm. I bought so many books. Um, this is probably the year I bought the most books ever. I've always known the value of reading, but like I said, wasn't really motivated to read. But now that I'm in the space of having to be a leader and show up and, and train and teach people, I'm consist- consistently pouring into myself. And so reading is definitely one of my greatest hobbies and I have to block out time to yeah. read. So part of like my productivity is that after I've worked three hours, I have to take a 30 minute break and like escape. So that could be watching an episode of Insecure. That Ooh, could be reading it. a book. That could be, you know, cooking or something. And, you know, uh, some people may have a negative connotation towards. Oh, no. Actually, I had a, a, a dialogue with someone that tuned in in one of my live trainings. And he was like, you know, I, I, I want to get back focused and, and be better with my time management, but I don't want to be a robot. And I said, well, you can be a robot. Would you rather be a robot that someone else designed or would you des- would you rather be the person that designed the robot for what mm. you want? I'm the designer of, of mm. this robot. I can switch up my programming at any yeah. time. But you have other situations where other people have designed your programming and it's like, how, how are you doing yeah, with I that? I love that. You know, what's your self-fulfillment like? So as much as people may feel a certain type of way about people that use calendars and things like that, you can keep all those skills over there, but I'm working towards what I said I want to do or how I want to yeah. live and what I want to clean. And so yeah. that's what comes with it. It's a level of yeah. discipline. Product of your own condition. Have you ever heard of Scribe? Yes, but you'll have to refresh my memory. But I definitely Scribe heard of it. Scribe is amazing. If you're a book person, um, I actually recently got Scribe. Because you basically get unlimited book access. And they got like a lot of old books. Like there's this old book that really, it's out of print. It's $900, but it's on Scribe. But, and then they have like audio books. So you think about Netflix, but like audio books, regular books. They got like documents. They got all kinds of stuff in there. Like just crazy stuff you wouldn't believe. And it's all, and it's wow. all like $10 a month. It's crazy. I I've read like eight audio books this month. So like for a person who's into books, I think you'd appreciate Scribe. Like I say, I'm about to download it. Yeah, so um, I literally have to get a phone with more storage and iCloud storage, so I can like just be me and do whatever I want to do on my phone. Exactly. So I'm yeah, about to go ahead and download well, yeah, it. I'm now. you gonna love it if you if you're in the books, you are gonna love it. Um, okay, so another thing I want to talk to you about is um, I know this is uh measure, right? Is that is that correct? Yeah. Okay, yeah, measure. So um, we using data in education to empower communities to self advocate. Now, me, I'm a big proponent of self-advocacy i'm a big proponent of just not being a victim so um tell me a little bit more about measure and what what measure does awesome so um beautiful story about measure i um in in my process of figuring life out i had one of my clients uh that i was doing some branding for and this was before i like consider myself a real company um and she was like you know I really love my experience of working with you. I'm also the chief technology officer with this nonprofit in Austin that's really using uh, data for good in, in, in the social justice space, and they need a chief communications officer. Now, mind you, I've never worked a corporate job. I don't know any of these chief positions. Mm-hmm. I'm just listening, and I'm like, okay, um, I've always wanted to be to to contribute to social justice reform, um, especially you know when the Black Lives Matter movement took off. I got really, I was saddened around that time and still empowered at the same time and just got tired of like the hashtags and posting. I'm like, I, what can I do? And I just didn't know what that looked like. And so when this opportunity came as chief communications officer, I mean, essentially I was in control of the brand and our marketing and 
um, how the community would see us. And so I drove down there and it was a volunteer position. So this wasn't a paid position. I've just always been a servant leader. Like that's just one of my things I've just taken on. And so, yeah, I, I came on and my first role was to um, put on this big data and community policing event. And essentially we created a space for activists, law enforcement, um, techies, uh, educators, students. We put them all in one space and we said, let's look at the data. Let's talk numbers. Let's make sure that just how in the medical space things are evidence-based, we should then apply that same mindset when we're talking about community mm. policing. And where we define community policing as the community policing themselves. Yeah. And police are a part of that community. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. the police aren't considered a part of that, like that's when things get, you know, so um, Mimi Styles, she's the founder. And due to my work that I put in, they've, rewritten the bylaws and added me as a co-founder, ah. um, which I'm so grateful for as well. Uh, it really started off as a project. She was one of those angry activists yeah. and she challenged, you know, the Austin police department and actually chief Acevedo was in Austin at this time. And now he's the chief of uh, police for okay. Houston. He was like, okay, well, cause she was like, you know, what are the metrics? What is this? What is that? And he was like, well, how about you give us your recommendations? She's like, okay. Mm -hmm. And so, that's kind of what Measure was created. It was a project. And then as, you know, the relationship started building and the community wants to get involved, it's now transformed into an organization. Um, and just last December, I was promoted to VP. Ah, and, congratulations. Um, thank you so much. And so I've definitely been honored on taking that role, um, doing a lot of um, operations and um, organizational change management yeah. and accounting. It's a mixture of things. And uh, I just see it as God just kind of elevating me and me managing, you know, $400,000 budgets. I mean, this is now becoming like a regular thing. And so now it's going to move up to seven yeah. figures. So I just feel like every experience is going to help me from my own personal experiences as well. And so I'm really grateful for what we do with Measure. And we're really, we have an initiative where it's called the Innocence Initiative, where we're disrupting the adultification of black mm -hmm. girls. And I don't know if you know, but a black girl is seen less innocent as young as the age five. Mm, that's interesting. Right? So just think about how that plays in the classroom. Yeah. If the teacher sees this child of not needing as much comfort, not needing as much attention, where it's like, where they're, they're basically hypersexualized. Mm. And, you know, uh, this, this a bias also happens in the household. I know you probably heard your aunt or grandmother call your cousin some fast or this or that. And, you know, that's coming from, like, the Jezebel stereotype. And it's so many things that's been rooted from our history. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's that I watched um, the Netflix show uh, Black mm -hmm. AF, and he's like, everything goes back to slavery. Yeah. The reason why life is like this now is everything goes back to slavery. So um, as I'm getting into it, I'm like, wow, everything goes back to slavery just from a generational thing. But, um, you know, a lot of these stereotypes are put on to these kids at young ages. Like, girls can't control if they start developing at 12 and 10. And so it's up to us as parents, leaders, to still protect their mm. innocence and to, to control that as much as we can. But it's sad, but when we talk about, you know, the kids being in school eight hours out the day and they're mainly engaging with their educators, um, our goal is to train 50 defense attorneys on what adultification bias is um, and essentially come up with the training that we want the education system to adopt um, as well so that they know because most of the time it's out of just plain ignorance. Yeah. They, they don't know that they're doing it. And so with Measure, we're doing our best to engage with the community, build awareness, letting them know what these stereotypes are and what role we can play in making sure that we protect our black girls as, as much as possible because they have the greatest potential and they have a lot of things working against them. We actually, um, and we're really big on getting the community involved. Mm. And so we, we build out these care teams. Um, we developed this model called the care model, which essentially is the blueprint for people to self-advocate in a way where they're being very intentional. We teach you how to pull data, how to understand data, how to then tell that st story and narrative from the foundation of data where we want to take in consideration of our emotions and how we're experiencing mm -hmm. these things and translate that into a story where we can also gain the respect when we go to City Hall, mm -hmm. right? So walk them through that process of how to do it. And then once they know how to do it, it's like, okay, what other policy do you want to work on? 
Yeah. Cool. Let's figure it out. So our whole thing is like, we're not going to do the work. We're going to work with the community so they know how to do the work for themselves. Definitely. And so it's all about creating systems, tools, spaces, environments um, for that for that whole purpose. So I, I think I touched on a lot, yeah. but hopefully. Oh, yeah. It's, it's immortalized right now. So it's good. Now, that's amazing. I, I, I love that. I love to hear all of that. Um, I guess another thing is, um, are you a, are you a big law of attraction person? Manifestation? Of course. <laughs> all day okay yeah. what's up let's, yeah, let's talk yeah. about it i mean i think the biggest thing is um i think a lot of times you said the word intention right and um i've read i've read so many books on the law of attraction actually i don't know if you ever heard of a book called reality Transurfing. it's probably one of the best books i've ever broke that's like a russian book it just recently got translated maybe about five years ago but it's an amazing book on like you know your reality and what reality is and like me I'm a very free thinker, so I like to listen to all different perspectives, but I think it's an amazing book. But as far as you, how much has that played a role? Like, really laying out, this is my vision for my life, and this is where I'm going. I heard you talk about vision boards, but I know intention is what's behind all that. So how has that played a role in you being successful and getting to where you are right now? Um, I feel like intention, attraction, faith, all of that goes jumbled up together. Not jumbled up. It's actually like stacked perfectly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's played a major role because I know, one, I know the importance of repetition. I also know that um, just naturally as humans, we have to see things. So, you know, faith being, but when you talk about truly manifesting and attracting, have to, it, like, it has to be visible. And so for me, like I, I used to do the vision boards where I would, you know, cut out magazines and do X, Y, and Z. But one, people don't really buy magazines like that anymore. And two, I'm not about to go to the store and buy a whole bunch. Three, I absolutely love Pinterest and I'm on Pinterest all the time. I have a vision board for just about any and everything you can think of. Yeah. That's just if you guys can follow me on Pinterest, <laughs> Fresh Treasure. Um, and so what I did was I took those pictures of what I wanted. Well, I wrote out my vision took those pictures, I put it on the screensaver, like I made a collage on Keynote, mm -hmm. and then I put it as a screensaver on my computer, I put it um, on the background of my phone, I put it inside of my journal, um, and at any, I just see it all around me. And so even in my room, I have my dry erase boards of my vision statement, um, who I am, what I want to attract, who I want to be. I'm very intentional about it. Yeah. And so... For me, although I'm big on like my time management, sometimes things do not go as planned yeah. and things yeah. have to shift. And, and I'm a freaking fire extinguisher. I solve so many problems a day. And I'm like, wait, did I do what I was supposed to do for me today? Yeah. Did I do that? Yeah. Um, so when I have those few minutes of breaking, my environment that I created still reminds me of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Because the... What we have to do is very simple, but it's very complex. Mm -hmm. It's simple, but it's not easy. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep things on the forefront. Mm -hmm. And even in my car, like I'm listening to um, either I'm doing praise and worship or I'm listening to an audiobook mm -hmm. or I'm listening to a podcast. And, you know, I have my I, I know I do my do I do my work in taking a break. But I don't have to take long breaks. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, pressure, you've been working, you've been doing this. For me, break is sleep. Mm -hmm. I value sleep a lot more. Mm -hmm. I really, so I've been, I've, been, I've been investing in my sheets and my pillows. <laughs> I've been in sleepwear, you know. I'm like, this is an experience I have to create for myself because yeah. I don't get it all the time. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. honestly, you know, a solid six hours, I'd be like, okay. Yeah. But there have been seasons. Uh, where it was more so of just napping, yeah, you know, yeah. three hours here, work, work, yeah. work, I'm going to do two hours, you know, and so I, I had to be mindful that sleep is important, and so I try to block that out, but in regards of manifesting and attraction, I'm writing things down, I'm visually making sure that it's apparent and that I see it, and I'm saying it. Yeah. I'm, I'm verbally saying it. So it's one thing to write it down. It's one thing to like, okay, I got my little pictures up. Cool. But if you're not speaking it, yeah, that's the last part you're missing. Yeah. And so I always say what I'm happy and grateful for 
all the time. Like, and even when I write my, in my gratitude journal, when I talk to God, I'm like, I'm so happy and grateful that by the end of this year, I'm going to have a community of 10,000 entrepreneurs making their legacy a priority. Yeah. I'm so happy and grateful this, this is happening. Awesome. Great. So let me go get to work. Yeah. It's already done. I like how so. specific it is. And I like how you talk about it as like, it's, it's, it's just a matter of fact, it's going to happen. Yeah. I think, um, so I was talking about this the other day and I've been talking about this because sometimes with me, I have like a concept that's swirling around in my head. And I'm always trying to distill it down to something simple. And I've been telling people what I believe it is, is act, action is faith, right? And I give the simple analogy, like you, you take action on things you have faith in. If you believe that um, I'm going to gonna get, if you flash your ball money and you believe I'm going to give it back, you just give me the money, right? You just take action on it. You have faith that I'm going to do it, right? You have faith in a leader. If you have faith in your, what you're doing, you just take action. But I also think the manifestation comes in is because I don't even think you have to believe you just have to take action. That's why it's big. That's why action takers, the show, all that is because for me, I know it's always been action. So it's fun just to hear, like you saying, being intentional. But also the other aspect is why I want you on the show is like, I see you doing. I see you doing mm -hmm. shit. I see you actually doing mm -hmm. it. So it's mm -hmm. like, I think that's a huge thing that um, that's very important. That's why I think it's so remarkable about the people that people talk about it. Then there's people like you who do it. So, yeah. so with that being said, I do want to talk about one more thing because I know uh, I can already see me and you would go two or three hours if <laughs> um, right, if right. Um, if we could. But I do want to um, go through this thing. I call it the massive action mindset. And it's something that I like to ask every entrepreneur, like, what is the one mindset that you believe? Let's say I'm starting from nothing. Like, I'm, I'm all right. I'm, I'm here for a consultation. I'm starting out. I want to be an entrepreneur. What is that one mindset? What is that thing I need to take with me? If I really want to be successful, you have to honor your truth. Mm. You have to honor your emotional truth. You have to honor your financial truth. Mm. You have to honor who, what, what you know your strengths are, what your weaknesses are. You have to take a truth assessment. Mm -hmm. That's my reality. You have to have a reality check with yourself about your non-negotiables, mm. about where you know you've been slipping at, you know, you just have to have an honest conversation. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people do that. They, you have to have a, you have to have an honest conversation with yourself, what you want, what you've done in the past that you're no longer going to do, what you no longer accept in your life, what, what you know your financial situation is. Okay. I'm making this amount of money. Okay. I don't have money to hire people. Okay, great. So this is the new skill set I need to learn. Okay, great. Like have a real conversation. Mm -hmm and know what your situation is before you start taking action. Yeah. Because if you take action aimlessly, now you're going to get even more discouraged with the, you know, you probably had a mustard seed of faith in the beginning, but yeah. now you're even discouraged because I knew this was a lie. Let me yeah. just, yeah. no, you didn't take the time to honor your truth of what your reality is. Mm -hmm. And so that, that would be my advice. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's amazing. Um, like I said, uh, I think, I think that's huge. Um, so I guess wrapping this up really quickly, like I said, I could, I could talk to you all day. And um, I do want to say this before we get into this last little part here. Um, I'd love to have you back on the show another time. Like I say, this first time is always just inter like an interview style, right? But you know, when stuff is going on, big things are going on. Yeah, you know, I hit you up and be like, hey, yeah, let's, let's talk about it. Let's, let's get your perspective on it. Huge. For sure. I'm totally open to having conversation. I'm setting up my life where this is what I do. Yeah. Simply just want to like converse, exchange ideas, mm -hmm. inspire, you know, educate, Definitely. you know, that this is everything that I'm working towards. So to know that, you know, this is your, your, our first episode together, I'm sure there'll be several, yeah. several more. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So, um, just tell them everything. So first just tell them, um, anything that you want them to go check out, anything that you're doing, anything that you're working on. We talked a lot about it. So just anything that you want to let people know to come check out that you're doing right now. For sure. For sure. Okay. So first and foremost, I would need you to go to brand as well mm -hmm. on Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. Go like, follow. Brand is well dot us. Mm -hmm. And that's our official website. I have a link that a tab that says resources. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of free things on there that you can download and get mm -hmm. started. I have a self-confidence challenge that we talked mm -hmm. about. You know, when we're not confident about something, most times it's connected to competence. And so I challenge you to learn a new skill set and different things. So that's a real cool a freebie to download. I also have a morning ritual freebie. Um, I have books on there. 
uh, so many different things. So at any given time, if you check out that resources tab, you can find some good stuff to just really start getting getting your gears going. Um, uh, also, I would like for you to go to YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For those of you that, you know, like to Netflix and mm-hmm. chill, hop on PSG Education and, and chill. pull that out. And, um, you know, take some notes and, and really uh, just take in all the content that's on there. I'm doing my best to add as much value as possible. Um, and then lastly, PAG Academy is officially launching this mm-hmm. summer. So as long as you're plugged in on all those platforms, you'll be in the know on what's to come next. Uh, What I'm doing is for the next six weeks, I'm going to be offering a founder's Mm. rate. And so if you lock in at the founder's rate and become a founding member, you'll kind of be grandfathered in at that rate forever. And um, I'm really excited. So go over there now, y'all. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Okay, so yeah, tell them um, all your social media, where they can find you on social media. Awesome. So at Precious Azure, so Precious spelled just like it is in the dictionary. No S H, no none of that. Um, and then A Z U R E E. So that's on all platforms. You can find me there. Um, and then yeah, check out my content. I, I like for people to give me feedback, what they like, what they took away. Um, and join my Facebook group, Brand is Wealth Community. I do a lot of uh, I do Monday trainings in there. They're like 10, 15 minute trainings. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I have definitely done my work in making sure that when you Google Precious Azure, there's yeah. going to be some content you own, there. You own that page. That's important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah. you. Um, yeah, so like I said, um, I appreciate you for coming out. I think it was amazing to talk. I think we learned a lot. I got a lot of great insights to somebody who's actually taking action. And I love everything that you're doing. Um, as for me, everybody, you know, I'm yeah. Princeton Hicks. Uh, you can find me Princeton Hicks on everything. Literally. Only thing is my mom was creative, so she doesn't spell it like the school. So it's P-R-I-N-S-T-O-N-H-I-C-K-S. And um, everything's on screen, but go check it out. Uh, make sure you go follow Precious. She's really doing amazing things in the community. And take these mindsets that she's talking about. Honoring your truth, that's huge. Because I believe once you know who you are, then it's easy for you to go out in the world and have a lot more faith because you're only going by your own North Star, star your own compass, right? So um, that's you. So thank you once again, Precious. And um, we'll talk to y'all next time. We out. Awesome. Thank you.